When you shop at a Walmart Vision Center, you get it. You know that you'll spend a little less on stylish glasses for the whole family. Welcome to the Vision Center. Let me know if you need help finding the perfect frames. Hey, Mom, you were right. These glasses are cool. Hon, they take our insurance. That means Papa's getting a new pair, too. Whoa, glasses start at just $39. Next stop, groceries. So you can get a little more of what you need. Find a Vision Center near you. Save money, live better. Walmart. Reintroducing the Iced Apple Crisp Oat Milk Macchiato from Starbucks. Now with Starbucks Blonde Espresso and Oat Milk, layered with flavors of apple, cinnamon, and brown sugar, and topped with a spiced apple drizzle. Welcome back, fall. Order today with the Starbucks app. I'd like to introduce you to the Minimalist Moms podcast. It's hard enough being a mom, and the last thing you need is stress from too much stuff and an overcrowded schedule. For too long, I lived with the mindset that bigger was better, and the more I added to my life, instead of feeling better, I felt overwhelmed. It was time for a radical new mindset. Less is more. I'm not into extremes. I didn't throw everything away. My brand of minimalism is more about adding than subtracting. Get rid of the excess to make room for what you love. In other words, it's about living life with purpose. I hope you'll listen in and my guest and myself can inspire you to think more and do with less. The Minimalist Moms Podcast, available wherever you listen to podcasts. Stories with happy endings are what we were used to as kids. But as we grow older, we realize the world is not such a happy place after all. My name is Michael Crutchfield, and I present The Scarecast, a podcast where I tell some of the scariest stories from all across the internet, which will keep you gripping to the edge of your seat. The Scarecast podcast features over 100 episodes spanning across six seasons, countless scary stories for you to play during your long drive, at work, or even at your bedside. From creepy pizza deliveries to anonymous stalkers from the deep web, the Scarecast can satisfy your cravings for horror upon the play button. Go listen to the Scarecast on Spotify, Apple Podcast, or wherever you listen to your podcast. I look forward to giving you the creeps. Way back in 2005, two brothers set off on a road trip that would save the world and change television. Sonny and Cher. No, you're so off point. (laughs) For 15 seasons and 327 episodes, Supernatural took audiences on a wild ride of family, fate, and faith with a rocking soundtrack and a seriously cool car. But that was then, Bobbo, and this is now. And yes, the show has quote-unquote ended, but we're not quite done with the journey. No, we're not. And that's why we're watching it all over again, or for Rob and me, for the first time, diving deep into every episode of Supernatural with the fine folks who made it. And we're taking you along for the ride. Whether you like it or not. I'm Rob Benedict. I played Chuck Shirley, a.k.a. God. Uh, spoiler! Yeah, it is a bit of a spoiler, but hey, spoilers are fair game here. Ah, fine. And I'm Richard Spate Jr., and I played the Trickster, also known as the Archangel Gabriel. And I did a little bit of Loki work in there. Okay, you know we're running out of time. Okay, well, we'll be talking about the entire series, so whatever we say, accept it. You've been warned. So buckle up and settle in. Because this, my friend, is Supernatural, then and now. Hey, everybody, it's Rob Benedict. And my name is Richard Spate. And we are talking about Season 2, Episode 13, Houses of the Holy. Houses of the Holy. That's my Robert Plant. Wow, that's great. And and that's exactly how that song goes. (laughs) Yeah, if Robert Plant sang it while while being hit by a car. That's right. But hey, before we get into it, did you know that our Patreon is up, Rich? The Patreon for the podcast is here. It's here. It's here. It's here. It's here. We hope members have enjoyed it so far. We really want this to be a home for the community around this podcast. Yeah, so come on, join us, move into the neighborhood, 
Yeah, you're going to be able to see bonus segments for this very episode. Yeah, man, there's a lot of extra extra stuff coming your way for this episode and for future episodes. So there's a whole bundle of goodies coming your way. So go to patreon.com slash SPN then and now to learn more and sign up. All right, let's dive in, shall we, Robbie? Houses of the Holy. Houses of the Holy. A woman sadly channel surfs television when suddenly she's- Wait, in- how do you sadly channel surf? She sadly channel tr- surfs. They're bummed that she didn't stick with one show? No, she just she just has sad eyes. <laughs> oh. A woman sadly channel surfs television when suddenly she is visited by a being she believes is an angel. Hmm. She said that the angel told her to kill an evil man. She's caught after the fact. Sam poses as an orderly and gets the info on the case by interviewing the women. All the women? How many women? I don't know. I don't know if we're ever sure. One. Just one woman. Okay, well. The woman. Back at the motel, Dean is enjoying some magic fingers, which if you didn't watch the episode, it's just <laughs> the thing that makes the bed shake, while listening uh, on his ear pods to Led Zeppelin. Sam comes back and they discuss the facts and the existence of angels. Uh, Dean, not a believer. Not a believer that Dean. Not a believer, which, you know, it's a lot. There's a, Well, we'll get into that later. Sam believes angels could exist. Dean doesn't. Told you. The brothers confirm that the victims so far have all been evil and coincidentally members of the Our Ladies of Angels Church. The boys visit the church and speak with Father Reynolds, who mentions that recently another priest there, Father Gregory, was recently shot in front of the church for his car keys. Was that recent? Yeah. Because I (laughs) see that happen recently. Recently, yeah. Uh, Sam isn't convinced it isn't an angel. Dean believes it is the spirit of Father Gregory, whose remains haven't properly been put to rest. They visit the crypt under the church where the priest is buried. While separated, Sam is visited by what he believes is an angel. Sam tries to convince Dean that the angel has told him to kill a man who will soon do something evil. Dean doesn't buy it. They're going to try and summon the spirit of Father Gregory. While out getting what they need for the seance, Sam sees the guy he is supposed to kill. Sam goes back to the church to complete the ritual to summon the spirit of Father Gregory. Dean trails the suspected bad guy to see what he might do. What might he do, Rob? What might he do? I don't know. It's bad, though. Father Reynolds shows up just as Sam is completing the seance, and Father Gregory's spirit arrives. Father Reynolds convinces the spirit he is not an angel. Men cannot become angels. Father Reynolds performs last rites and puts the soul to rest. Did you know that men couldn't become angels? I didn't know that. I didn't either. Hmm. Meanwhile, Dean catches his target assaulting a woman. Hmm. Dean breaks it up and gives the guy a beatdown. Yeah. As the guy flees in his car, Dean chases in the Impala. However, in the chaos of the chase, the guy almost hits a truck, which slams on its brakes and impales the guy with a metal pipe. Dean believes he may just have witnessed the will of God. It's crazy that there were fleas in that guy's car. Fleas? (laughs) It it says the guy's fleas in his car. Is that what I said? The guy's fleas? <laughs> no. <laughs> he, but what's weird is that he was wearing fleece. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a story point. Um, so I really, uh, I liked this episode. It's so good. Yeah. Kim, it's Kim Manners. Kim Manners, just at his best. And before I knew it was Kim Manners, like I'm just watching the teaser, I was mm-hmm. immediately like, whoa, whoever directed this brought out his A game. It mm-hmm. is so well done. It's mm-hmm. so stylized. It's different than any episode we've seen. And we've seen several Kim, Ep- Kim Manners episodes. It, it, he lives in extreme close-ups on the guys constantly. I don't know if you noticed that. Mm. He did a ton I of noticed big the, camera the moves. moving around, yeah. That, there's yeah. that one full circle he does in front of the church around Sam until Sam finds the gate. Yeah, that one. And then inside the church, he comes off, off the sanctuary, kind of swoops down. and Yeah, it starts, you know I mean? with, the, starts with Jesus. Yeah, and it's comes down the crucifixion. such a great, like, so well shot. He does this move down on the woman who's sadly channel surfing. He kind of does this little boom yeah. down on her that's really stylized and interesting. It's so well done. Yeah. It's so well done. Yeah. And, and and it honestly creates this whole idea that, like, there's someone else watching, that uh, there's, you know, the angels are watching kind of thing. Yeah. And I'll tell you this, from a guest cast standpoint, incredibly strong guest cast, the, the, the two priests- both were great. Yes, and the young priest is a guy that I worked with. We did a movie together. His name is David Monahan, and uh, he and I did a movie together, which would have been at first. I was like, "Oh wow, this is after we did the movie together." And then I realized, like, "Oh yeah, no, the movie we did was after he shot this." Oh, so David Monahan and the other guy, his name was Dennis Arndt, and man, they were great. 
They yeah. were so good. And it, and it mattered a lot. They carried so much of the heart of the episode being the priest sort of, you, you know, like you, you, it wasn't monster of the week so much as it was like a, you know, lost soul, you know, trying yeah. to do what they thought was right. In the That's what I liked of- about it. It was a different, it was different. And you can't help but think watching an episode like this, knowing what we know, what about our own characters that we both play and, you know, the emergence of Castiel in season four, you know, that this, this is all very, what's the word? Prescient? Yeah. You know, just talking about Dean not believing in angels, like cut to his best friend Cast saying goodbye in season 15. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know, man. It's, it's, you're right. It is a real tease up a lot of story that, that un, unfolds in the re- remaining 13 years of the show. Yeah, and the, it's, their relationship. It's just so with, well done, too. With all the know? angels. and Yeah. And so sweet. Didn't you think it was like, like when the one father lets the other father rest by saying his last rites? It was just yeah. so beautifully done. Really sweet. And it, so it's, it's interesting, too, that so Sam is the one, Sam saw the vision. You know, Sam's always the one that sort of has that sort of connection to the other world. Right. You know, that he saw the vision. And that it, the vision told him about the bad rapist guy. And sure enough. Yeah. You know. So I think it's great. They, yeah. it's, it's a it's an interesting story. It's really well done. It makes you wonder. So was God telling this priest? Maybe this maybe this was answered in the episode. I don't remember. But so this priest is priest is actually taking out bad guys, right? Like he he is. He's having people do the Lord's work. Right. People who are troubled, so that they get set free because they feel like they've done good in the world. And then, or at least that's his theory. And then the bad person is taken out. But who's right. telling him who the bad people are? Is he just omniscient because he's an angel or or he thinks he's an angel? Or is God really saying, hey, that's a bad person. Go do something about it. Like, how's he getting his information? Well, that's the thing. that we don't. It kind of leaves it open-ended. And the way it, I interpreted it is, like, this guy thinks that he's an angel and he's doing God's will. But they're, they're like, no, you, you can't be an angel. You're just a lost spirit, but a good person. And you need to lay yourself to rest. But after they do that, the guy gets impaled with a pole and that leads Dean to believe maybe God is at work here. Great, great episode. Sarah Gamble wrote the daylights out of it. Uh, yeah. uh, Kim Manners literally directed his face off. It is just, it, it's so well done. And as yeah. a guy who's trying to sort of find a directing voice with my measly 25 episodes to the hundreds that Kim Manners did. Yeah. You look at him, you're like, man, he's, he was a master of his craft. He really yeah. was like, this this could have been a generic episode of TV. It is so elevated. And yes, the script is great, but the directing takes it up a massive notch. Yeah. It's just really, really well done. I give this again, and I haven't handed these out. I have not been handing out big bo- right. big full beards. I'm giving this one another big full Chris Stapleton beard. Same, same. A well, well groomed beard, full beard from me as well. No patches. Nope, no patches, no gray, a consistent color, and probably uh, well-oiled and, and uh, conditioned because it's that's, a silky soft, true. but also yep. big and bushy. Well, for our interview today, we have a returning guest. It's Ivan Hayden, who, of course, served as the visual effects supervisor on 137 episodes of Supernatural. Please welcome <laughs> back Ivan Hayden. That's a lot of episodes and not even half of the actual show itself. I know, I know. <laughs> Ivan Hayden. <laughs> Ivan, thanks for uh, being a part of the show again. I really appreciate it. Um, My pleasure, guys. Houses of the Holy is what we're talking about. And th- there's, obviously, there's stuff to talk about at the episode. And also your sort of now life with the, in your timeline of the show. Because at this part, at this point in your life of the show, you're now an in-house guy. Right, Correct. you're like, yeah. Correct. Is this the first episode for that, or is this? Uh, no, season uh, the ep- episode season two, episode one was the first one of that. And I realized after we had our conversation on the last show, I was talking about season two's finale, not season one's finale. Yeah. I realized that afterwards, I, w- I was walking away and I was walking my dog, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's the totally wrong season. We just <laughs> well, <laughs> we figured that out the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> the hard way meaning people on Twitter made comments about it. We we're like, oh, right. right. Like, yeah. right that's totally, I, I forgot all about season. Well, listen, here's the thing about it that's great, is that we've been telling people since we started this podcast that we're watching the show along with them. We are learning the show along with them. We haven't watched it previously. We are newcomers to the show, even though we're a part of the show. And we just proved our own point by not being able to yeah. correct you. We, we don't know anything. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> going I was like, oh my gosh, that is, uh, I can't believe I did that. But uh, anyway, I apologize to you and your listeners, but if it, all the people that caught that, <laughs> they are the super fans and there should be like a pin or a badge. Or it, true. Right. A tattoo. True. Yeah. <laughs> Keep uh, going, will you? I trumped Hayden, you know, one of those. Something. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, watch, I was watching the episode just knowing that we'd be, we were talking to you and, uh, you know, thinking about the, the, what it, what work you did in the show. The first thing I noticed was the, uh, the TV at the beginning, the TV preacher mm-hmm. on the TV. Now I know how we would do that today. How did you do that? Did you track and insert it? Was there yeah, we, we tracked it, inserted it, and did the fritzing and stuff on the screen because we, if I remember correctly, because we didn't have, they, they weren't physically going to have the guy shot first. Like we, uh, we were still doing, like, we still had a second unit at that point where they, we were doing pickups and stuff like that that didn't involve the full cast. So we could do a pared down, like, single camera shoot and stuff like that. So we shot him on uh, on the blue screen and then did the, did the burn in into it and we fritzed it. If it was going to be done practically on the day, you'd use like a, maybe a playback crew that are specifically set with that. Yeah. Perhaps your DP would have like a, a dimmer switch where they could switch the essentially do what the TV is doing, which is fluctuate the power in the signal. Right. 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 And make it fritz. So, so we burned that in and that whole sequence was, was awesome. Cause it wasn't, there weren't a lot of visual effects in that whole opening sequence other than, you know, that was in one of what the we TV. call the invisible effects. Like, you right. Know, when you see the angel at the end, you're like, Oh, it's, that's obviously a visual an effect. effect. Yeah. But like the, the fritzing TV, you, if, if we've done our job, right. It's like you said, did they do that for real? Or was right. that, you know, you don't, you don't. You know. And was the shaking of the bed, was that all practical or people? That was Randy Shimku and, and the special effects guys. They had shakers on all the equipment. They had people actually physically on the other sides of the wall flat, shaking the stuff, knocking, wow. knocking things down. Uh, wow. I think we had in some spots, we had some mono removal to, to certain things. They wanted to fall at a specific point. Right. So they didn't want it to just happen randomly. And yeah. everybody got out of there except for the camera guys. And they're shaking their cameras too. Right. So it was just right. like, I walked in there and I watched when like, it's one of those <laughs> You, you talk about these things in meetings, you talk about, you know, you go through it, you go, Hey, Randy, like I can't visual effects wise do all of this, right? Like I, I can't physically make everything shake. I can do the T, you know, I, I can do the TV, but I can't do the rest. Uh, what, what are we going to do? And he's like, okay, well, we'll put shakers in. We'll do this. Like, great. That's awesome. And then you get in there and you see what's physically happening. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm screwed. <laughs> How am I going to track this? Everything's moving. The camera's moving. The background's moving. Right. What, what, what right. What do I do with this, <laughs> <laughs> that's what pushes you forward right the, like, you know, necessity you just, is the mother of invention yeah right exactly, exactly. wow well and actually it's one of those flip flip things in that same that same vein randy was looking at the angel that sam when sam sees the angel and it shakes and does all that randy yeah like, yeah i i can't he's like i've been i physically can't do that i don't have time to mold it cast it test it put shaker like i can't like what what are we going to do here and then so we're like okay we'll do it in cg and oh uh, and yeah i thought that was i thought that was practical yeah, yeah. cool yeah so that that's one of those things where you, you sit down and you're like i can't and then so, you know the other team will jump up and and help each other out right? that's cool yeah so now speaking of helping each other out you're talking about this this big being of light the big beam of light that represents the angel that's obviously several people working together, right? Because there has to be some sort of light source that then you grab onto and expand. Am I correct in saying that? Like You you are correct. Um, we we did it the first time. I think it was season one where we talked with Serge. We actually got like an 18K, but we just brought the bulb in. Oh, and wow. It was a naked 18K. And that, like, I didn't realize how much heat those things put out. Wow. <laughs> Until you turn one on in a room. And then you're like, you're blinded. You can't look at it. And the wow. heat coming off the thing is insane. And it flares everything out. Yeah. So we put an 18K with a flag in front of the lens so it wouldn't flare the lens. And that would give us all of the light in the room. And there's a a warm-up period to those old sort of those filament bulbs, right? So it isn't just like you turn it on and it's there. It takes a while to heat up. And then it takes a while to cool off. You cut the power and it takes a little while for that to dissipate. So both both things we rolled at the at the turn on. And then we let it cool down and, and we let it cool off. Wow. Right. Wow. Amazing. And then the, the light itself, it was like, it's like this light. And then there's this sort of like dark sort of figure almost in the middle. I really love the way that you did that. Cause it was, it wasn't quite 
It's supposed to be, they, they're seeing an angel, but you're seeing something that's interpretive. Yes. And I like that you did that. It wasn't like, didn't look like an angel because we're not there yet in the show. Well, that, that was our thing. And, and toward, at the very end, when you see them in there and they're in the back and, and at the end, we actually did streaks and gave the light the look of, of a, angel wings, of wings right? uh-huh. so we we flipped it at the start you know this is those things where you try to look at it you go how can we evolve visually the visual effects how can we help propel the story forward so we flipped it the other way around where at the start you see the dark figure in it and it's this glowy thing and you don't know what it is and then at the end you're thinking it's an angel you see less figure more angel at the end, you see more figure, less angel shape at the beginning. Right. And uh, we actually went around and around with it because it was, it's one of those, yeah, again, in the meetings, yeah, I can totally do it. It'll be awesome. We'll put it in there. We shoot the guy, we'll see, steal it on the blue screen, and then we'll put his figure into it and he'll occlude the light and it'll look awesome. But it looks like a human. Like it right. looks physically like a person. So we went like that. I think, I think we did like 14 versions of that where it was, it was too much. It was too much. It was too much. It was not enough. It was not enough. It was too much. It was too much. And then ultimately we, we landed on the end of it. And that's sort of where the producer thing comes into it. Cause as the visual effects people were like, it looks awesome. The first one you can see the dude, right. And it looks so cool, but then, you know, it's a human physical shape in that, you know, it didn't look, you got to be a little less on the nose with it. Right. So, so Eric and, and Phil and Todd Ehrenauer, I think actually was, was, uh, was also helping us out with that too. Cause I was, I, I got on the phone at one point and I'm like, look, man, I, I got other shows. We got to get going on. <laughs> When's this good enough? <laughs> someone help me out here, will you? Yeah. Let this be enough. <laughs> yeah. And then Todd and Todd often would, would talk me off the cliff. Just he and I on the phone where he'd be like, okay, I have look, 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 just. Yeah. Right. <laughs> We will be right back. Hey, everyone. I want to tell you about a new podcast from AMC Plus in partnership with Pineapple Street Studios. It's the AMC Plus Interview with the Vampire podcast, a companion podcast to AMC's new TV adaptation of the Anne Rice classic, which follows Louis de Pont de Lac's epic story of love, blood, and the perils of immortality, as told to the journalist Daniel Malloy. Hosted by comedian and vampire superfan Naomi Ekparrigan, each episode digs into these questions with the actors, writers, and directors behind the show. And Naomi gets into all the vampire history and mythology with vampire experts. Yes, you heard me right. And Naomi gets into all the vampire history and mythology with vampire experts. Yes, you heard that right. Vampire experts. Trust me, you won't want to miss this one. You can listen to the AMC Plus interview with the Vampire Podcast every week, wherever you get your podcasts. Reintroducing the Iced Apple Crisp Oat Milk Macchiato from Starbucks. Now with Starbucks Blonde Espresso and Oat Milk, layered with flavors of apple, cinnamon, and brown sugar, and topped with a spiced apple drizzle. Welcome back, fall. Order today with the Starbucks app. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. And now back to the episode. I don't, I don't know anything about visual effects, but I got to think, I got to think working with light is tricky. Now, I know you use some practical light, like reflections on Sam, and you would show, shine an actual light on them. So what they're seeing is practical light shining back on them, right? So, you you know, when we're shooting at somebody looking at this thing, you can just shine light on them, and and that's the image reflecting onto them. But when you're looking at the image itself, there's so much spillover. Like light is not a concrete bordered thing like yes. a monster would be. And I mean, or a detail or even scales on skin, even though it moves, they've got concrete defined lines, right? Yeah. Light is light, especially tricky or am I? Well, my no, novice... you're, 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 to- you're totally correct. There are, you know, in the visual effects world, they're, they're, you know, it's the yin and the yang. Like supernatural is one of the hardest things about supernatural is it all happens at night. And how do you make something look cool in the dark? Because when they're, when it's actually dark and black, there's no information, right? Like if you were to like load up, the, it's just black. And same thing with light. When you get to that quotes clipped, that pure white, as bright as it can be without being illegal, you have no information there. There's nothing there. It's blown out. So to control what that, that looks like, 
uh, darkness is black is it's like, it's so hard to do visual effects in, but then when you get into this space, it's the same problem. And this first time, one of the things that we, aside from the figure and the shape of the person that we had to figure out was the light, the beams, the rays, that's all like a 2D effect, right? Like it's, it's as if someone in the old days was painting on a cell and you're painting on top of the image. So you get the lights and the rays and timing when that starts and grows and builds versus how much of that physical light that you're talking about is growing and building, you want it to, you know, because this two-dimensional paint job is supposed to, in theory, be casting light in your physical space, and you've got to time it right to make it work. And then you've got to fluctuate it when you see your figure inside of it. So you're totally correct. The actual shooting at the light, and you don't, there's no information. It's just, it's it's a white pixel, right? So you're you're trying to keep the information in, in, in the room around you, the physical room, to make it looking real. Otherwise, what are you looking at? You're looking at a marshmallow, right? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> You know, my, my, my favorite effects in this episode is the pipe impaling the dude in the car. So there's this car chase and then like a truck sort of jackknifes and this pipe goes flying and you have this sort of 3D, the pipe comes right at you through the wind. And that is you written all over. I mean, in fact, that, that was like yeah. 100% you. Yeah. And, and it's just a great shot. And, and again, what is this, 2007, 2008? Uh, on the on the CW, like that's a, that's an incredible you know a movie level effect that's happening there. Um, what, walk me through that. Like what what what, what was the design there? Well, I think I think it involved me in the fetal position in the in the, in the concept meeting. Uh, <laughs> maybe some tears. Sobbing yourself to sleep. How in the hell? Crying. You know. How many days uh, do I yeah. have? Uh, might have might have been it might have involved uh, uh, a quick run to the liquor store to bribe my crew. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, no, it was, that was, again, it's, it's that, uh, part of the thing and the beauty of supernatural that it'll always be so special to me was the, the camaraderie of the crew, um, mm-hmm. that everybody, uh, and not to say that that doesn't exist on every show it does, but sometimes there's just conflicts and resistance to things. Everybody has budgetary restraints and there's just stuff where it's like, I, you know, that, that willingness to jump in is, is, is not as forthcoming. Mm-hmm. So it was really, we initially tried with Randy to do pipes with wires and have something that we could fly through and we were just going to do a rig removal. That wasn't going to work. Uh, we sat down and we, you know, I have to talk to the director, but very specifically, like, what, like, actually are you talking about doing here? <laughs> right. <laughs> like, right, right, what right. are your shots? Like, I can't, I, I, like, I can tell you what your shots would be if I was going to do it. And sometimes, you know, I would do that. I would just sort of sketch up some, some uh, storyboard stuff and go, this is what I'm talking about. So we had to figure out how to get it to come off the, off the, uh, off the car, we had a secondary car with a broken window. So it's, we had a physical thing through the guy and he's laying there. We did, uh, we had to time the glass break and we built the thing in CG and then had to track it into, into the shots. And sometimes like the angel with Sam, the camera motion that they get on the day becomes this huge problem situation. This one actually went really, went really well. Like it was one of those things where the artists did it, not to say we got it right the first time. I mean, there was like, you know, you start with the edit, then we go through and we do animatics. And right. in our timeline, uh, Phil and again, Todd, the guys were like uh, really good with working with me where, you know, once we got the director's cut, during the producer cut, they would kind of involve visual effects. Like we do a special visual effects meeting afterwards, but we do a visual effects cut where we would then again, open up the edit, change it. And then that would be what would go out to the network. It wasn't like oftentimes it's director cut, producer's cut, network cut, and then it comes into visual effects and you go. And in the facility world, that's how that works. Once the network's gone, yeah, it's blessed. Now you got to go do it and you have to get it done. So we got, we, you know, we, we looked at the cut, we did an animatic. There was like some, some sticky parts where like the pipe starts to kind of float funny because we can't quite track it. So let's, at, we need this to cut eight frames sooner. Can you give us more head on this one to give us time? Cause we've got to break that window. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we're on the window break for too long. It doesn't work. Can you cut that? We get an animatic done and then they lock it. And then the guys went through it. You Once you've got your sort of rough tracking and your animation in, then you texture it, you light it. We've got our pictures and you, you do the shadow pass. 
you do the breaking glass, you have it hit the person. It was, it, it, and it went really well. Like it was one of those things where it's like, I don't have a lot to say because it, it went so well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the amazing. solo ones that I remember. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's amazing. I mean, as I was watching, it, I was like, Oh, I mean, I really had the reaction you're supposed to have. It looks like it's coming right at you. Yeah. It's, it's so well done. And I couldn't yeah. help but think of the omen. It reminded me of, mm. of the sequence in the omen when the truck hits and the glass flies off and it decapitates the guy. Yeah, uh, you know, not to copyright infringe anyone, but we were talking about that. Oh yeah, <laughs> we were doing it right because we in the visual effects space, the easiest thing to do when you're talking to your artists and you're talking to directors and producers is to show someone something like what you're talking about. Right. So it's right. like, this is the inspiration for what we're, what we're trying to do. And that was one of the things that we, uh, we talked about. And I mean, Richard, you, I, if you, you came into the, uh, the VFX trailers uh, a couple of times back in the day yeah. um, that we like all of the, all of the DVDs that were like down in my little section stuck in the corner where you're just like something like this. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. 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 Exactly. Funny you guys say the omen, right. Cause that, and that's, that's awesome. You, you guys have given me two, Two compliments today that are that are huge. One that it's it looked like a feature film thing, and then the other one is that it looked like what we were trying to do, which is that's yeah. it. I mean, that's that's visual great. Visual effects, you know, should never overpower. Like if everyone's talking about the effects instead of the story, then I haven't done my job. Right, dude. The it, it, there's something it. else that's that is that I got to bring up that is sort of a slightly off topic, but it also like freaked me out. Hey, it's so well done. That that sequence is so well done. They all are, but that one's amazing. And made me think of the omen, and then made me think of this story that was in the Nashville, Tennessee paper when I was a kid, <laughs> where a school bus ran into a pipe truck, and the pipe went through the window and impaled like a twenty-something-year-old guy to the bus. And the picture in the headline, like on the in the paper, on the front page, was the guy with the pipe going through him, and him going ah, you know. And it was oh my god. It was like a police file photo. He survived. It went through like it crushed parts of him. But yeah. at the pole, went, and it just, it just made me think of that. Oh my God. So, sorry, I brought it up. It's so random, I know. But like, wow. it's just I, like, want, I wonder if Eric or, or when they wrote that, if they had seen that picture. I don't know, man. It's Midwest. You know, it, it, it's a Nashville paper, but that doesn't mean it was a Nashville story. That could have happened right. anywhere in the USA. Yeah. Right? And it could have been an AP or UPI photo. No. Wow. You know, isn't that crazy? Um, yeah, no. crazy picture to, to, you know, publish in the paper. I but know I, that's that's insane, and and I think I think that the the reason part of the reason why that's so scary is that car chase that Lou and the direct obviously the director and and Serge lighting mm -hmm. it and making it all because lighting a car chase at night to look cool and is is I can imagine not an easy thing to do. I certainly don't have the skill set for it, but. Between the camera guys being courageous on the ground, the stunt guys, the car chase, and then you end with that, like yeah, hmm. yeah. So with that, um, it was a Kim Manners episode too, and it's yeah. and I and this is one yes, too. Was. I I was remarking as I as I watched it, I'm like, wow. He had, I don't know, Rich. Did you notice a lot of his shots were dude? So, it yeah, was those, such a dynamic. He was, he was on and he was on fire for this one. I really feel like there were a lot. I of, thought like, so too. I, I, it's the same feeling. Like I'm like he is doing 360 degree yeah. moves around the car. Yeah, like yeah, it was yeah. just he was in he was in the soup on this bad so boy. Maybe you both can tell me this, but like for the car chase, they're. They're, they're you know coming around corners and you know and they're, they're and they're obviously you're on the street filming that. Then when you cut in and you see it's obviously Jensen driving. Is that cut poor man's process, or are they actually on the road shooting that as well? I don't know if they ever did drive. That it looked like a driving shot to me, but I mean you were there. It, I don't it know. was. It was. It, I. It, it's hard to. It's hard to remember because there I know, were so many driving shots. Yeah. But, uh, and this was season two. So I think that this, there was process trailer involved in it, which mm -hmm. is it's the car on the back of a sort of a, a flat deck. It's a lower flat tech. The cameras are on the car and a truck is driving down the road and, and the camera is doing the thing and the rest of it. Right. The, we did visual effects shots of driving plates as well but uh i i it was pretty specific where we were shooting in the backgrounds because that's the biggest thing like you can do there's there's two <laughs> it's it's a thing i hate uh, as a visual effects person i hate when producers and, and people talk about poor man's process is where you're 
in a room and you you're like you're doing a shot at night the car's at night you've got like those two headlights that are just sort of behind the behind the windshield yeah right. that's it's that's poor man's process yeah. you're in space you don't have any bells and whistles right uh serge really 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 developed this uh over the years this high-end way of making the poor man's process work which involved yeah. like rotors and cutouts so there was like a like a belt that twisted and lights yeah. inside the belt. lights going it, by as they drove by yeah street so it lamps would, it would yeah. look like the lights were moving and it would be flickering as if they were through trees and stuff like that still poor man's process but a much a not not so poor man's process i guess you would say yeah yeah uh, and then there's the visual effects stuff which isn't a poor man's process that's a visual effect that costs money to do it and then there's the actual process trailer and then you're physically out on the car with the guy in it and the camera or something mounted on the hood and you're driving and doing it right um, at times we did hood, hood mounts as well so okay. it, it could have been a combination of that because there were a bunch of different locations where we were shooting all of the the car chases and the the driving mm-hmm. with bottoming out and sparking and you know mm-hmm. randy having the uh, the zinc plates on the bottom so when they hit the ground they would spark. yeah yeah, uh, they and did the that. Suspension, you know, Lou making the suspension just right so it would hit every time. And right, <laughs> wow, it was yeah. amazing. Man. It was good. It was a good car chase too. It's fun and, and doing it and uh, and doing it on wet ground, right? Because you wet it down because wet pavement films better because it's got reflections and it's dark and you see lights on it and it's got way more texture than like dry pavement so at night you do a wet down so it's it's more cinematic right so you got these stunt guys doing skid outs on yeah stopping right where they're supposed to stop yeah it's insane not yeah. a job for the faint of heart right um, no exactly man are you back in the day were you were you the onset guy as well or did you send grant mark somebody else to be the onset supervisor for these it was moments. it was me and adele and I was oh yeah i remember adele and adele was my coordinator and and we would tag off you know if there was a simple gag it, i i kind of look I've, and i've always looked at our jobs as, as humans no matter what your job is where you are in the world is to teach other people to take your job and if you're not doing that, then you're not doing a good job because you're not staying cutting edge and stuff. So I'd take get Adele on set and teach her how to do stuff and then put her in that position to supervise shots when she was like, I don't think I want to do this. I'm like, you can do it. Go do it. And we got <laughs> to the point where I could take selfishly, I could take a show and go, I'm going to go home on Friday night. You do this shot. <laughs> right, I need right, to sure. stay till five in the morning. <laughs> Sure. That's why you farm it out, man. Right, right. And then what about, I know the answer to this, but so people know uh, when you, when, when the boys are doing computer research, they're on the computers, uh, do you build fake websites and search results? Yeah. Uh, and, and that will either be one of two spaces. It, w- uh, it will either come from the art department and all be generated by the art department, mm. or it will be, uh, if they have to interact with the computer, uh, then it'll either be playback or visual effects involved. But if it's just like images that they're tapping the button and scrolling right. through, then it'll all be art department. Art department. Yeah. Yeah. I remember having it. I mean, I've done that so many times where I'm the guy on the computer and you just hit the space button and it changes the, to the next image. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it's so great. It's so great to have you back. Uh, I've it, been, it's so, it's such an education every time. I don't care how yeah. many times we talk to you about how many different episodes, it's all new to me and us yeah. and our listeners. It's great. Oh, I'm glad. Uh, so thanks for joining us and, and please come talk to us again. Uh, absolutely guys. A- a- anytime. I'm sure, I'm sure people will get bored of, of hearing the nerdy geeky stuff. But Never. I love they're, it. So. They're all in for the nerdy geeky, baby. <laughs> this is Jensen stopping in to say, Hey, and let you know that we've got to take a quick break. I'm about to pop. When you shop at a Walmart Vision Center, you get it. You know that you'll spend a little less on stylish glasses for the whole family. Welcome to the Vision Center. Let me know if you need help finding the perfect frame. Hey, Mom, you were right. These glasses are cool. Hon, they take our insurance. That means Papa's getting a new pair, too. Whoa, glasses start at just $39. Next stop, groceries. So you can get a little more of what you need. Find a vision center near you. Save money, live better. Walmart. Thanks for supporting Supernatural then and now. And now, back to the show. 
So great to talk to Ivan, as always. You know, I, I just learned so much. I know we're always talking about how great our interviews are, but man, especially when it's the technical folks who, you know, did so much great work. I learned so much. Yeah, me too. You know, I got to tell you something else for anybody listening at home. If they ever wonder, why didn't Rich go into a technical field? It's because I'm a moron. I did my interview with Ivan and in my attempt to open a new track, completely erased my interview with, with Ivan. Yeah, it's um, hard to watch. It's hard yes. to watch. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's awkward. So anyway, uh, it was great. No, that was great. That was awesome. And uh, he's so knowledgeable. I like asking him questions and hearing his answers. And he's so charming too. What a, what a lively, fun guy. All right, let's get let's get into the mythology of the episode. Mythology, mythology. The word angel translates from Hebrew as messenger. While most depictions of angels in Jewish and Christian scriptures depict them as messengers or protectors, there are several texts that tell stories of avenging angels sent to carry out the judgment of God through violence. Wow. Well, did you know that the mythology around angels is present in most cultures and religions around the world? The most common depiction is a guardian angel. Hmm. You know, Sarah Gamble, who wrote the episode, stated, while I was doing the episode, I read a book about guardian angels where people say angels saved them from a car accident or whatever. And it freaked me out because there are people all over the world who are reporting basically the same experience. And I was like, this is not dismissible. And from that came this great episode. It's awesome. At this point in season two, Kripke did not believe angels would be a part of the supernatural mythology. But he did say at this time, Never say never. Wow. Little did he know he was about to create one of the, you know, the third lead on the show. It was going to be an angel. Exactly. Hey, are you ready for some fun facts? Am I? Tickle me ready. Fun facts. Fun facts. Fun facts. Houses of the Holy is, of course, the name of a Led Zeppelin song from 1973. Houses of the Holy. And uh, and an album the same by the same name. How- of the whole life. 1973. It's 1973. The title of the episode was originally Touched. Which I'm sure was a reference to Touched by an Angel, which they do kind of reference in this because he talks about Roma Downey. Right. Uh, Roma Downey, of course, is a reference to Touched by an Angel. She played the angel in the series for nine seasons. Wow. I didn't know that. You ever do a guest spot on, on uh, Touched by an Angel, Rob? No, you? No. You ever been touched by an angel? Yes. Ever been uh, touched by a man named Angel? <laughs> yes. You know, uh, you weren't on Touched by an Angel, but I bet you everyone on the show thinks that you were. <laughs> you in know the- who enjoyed me in Touched by the Angel? The entire crew and cast. <laughs> Loved my work in Touched by an Angel. In the rules of the series so far, ghosts have been tied to things or places. In this episode, the ghost is able to freely travel, which That's is interesting. Nice. According to the bonus features of the DVD from season two, this episode was inspired by the poem, The Second Elegy, which I suppose is about an angel sent by God to kill people. Right. Very very different than Hillbilly Elegy, the The book book written by J.D. Vance. Yes. uh, A man who wrote a great book, but is now running for the senator of Ohio. Is he? Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. This is, uh, it's really fun. I feel like the show's really hitting its stride right now. And I've been um, laughing my face off. I'm not sure if any of my laughs are going to make the edit, but I've been laughing. You know what I mean? This is yeah, we had one. a good time. We had a good yeah. time recording it and uh, really loving the show right now. And Two, I'm here. Yeah, another big beard, man. I mean, that's yeah. we're, we're really, there's some great yeah. episodes. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Check out that Patreon and we'll see you at the next one. We will. This episode of Supernatural features Jared Padalecki as Sam Winchester and Jensen Ackles as Dean Winchester. Guest stars included Dennis Arndt and David Monahan. Houses of the Holy was written by Sarah Gamble and directed by Kim Manners. Edited by David Ekstrom. Music by Jay Greska. Supernatural is executive produced by Eric Kripke and Robert Singer. This episode originally aired on February 1st, 2007. This episode of Supernatural Then and Now is hosted and executive produced by Richard Spade Jr. and Rob Benedict. Produced by Stephen Hine. Written by Stephen Hine and Haida Holscher. And edited and associate produced by Trey Booty. Oh, my God, (laughs) baby! Music provided by Tim Wynn. (laughs) The episode was recorded with the help of Sonic Fuel Studios. This podcast is from Story Mill Media. Follow the podcast on Instagram and Twitter at SBN Then and Now. And by God, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash SPN Then and Now.
But dude, you're gonna we're gonna have the best podcast for a while there while you're doing that because you're gonna have so many stories. Hey everybody, this is Rob Benedict. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> hey everybody, this is Rob Benedict. <laughs> He's still laughing. Because you just turned on the radio voice. We were having like the most serious, like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Hey, hey! Yeah. Yeah. Robbie. yeah, I'm recording. I'll delete this and not send it to you, but I'm recording. I'm what are you doing? Are you Googling something? I'm looking at, and I'm looking at, so Houses of the Holy, the song, was on the album Physical Graffiti. Right. But Houses of the Holy is the name of the previous album. Right. And then there's that song that's da 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 That's on, that's on physical graffiti. And what's that song called? Take me to your garden. Yeah. What's that song called? Custard pie or the rover. In my time of dying. House of the holy. Hey everybody, this is Rob Benedict. Come on. Okay. I got this. I got it. And my name is Richard Spate. It's it's and it's supernatural then and now, and we are, are you, talking. Are you sure? I don't know. <laughs> oh my god! Recording stopped. Ugh. All right. While our getting what the need for the seance. What? I don't know. Seance. Hold on a second. <laughs> Hold on one second. While our getting what the need for the seance. Seance. Wait a minute. I gotta even like I, I just was listening to you, and I gotta see this sentence. This is Rob's last show, everybody. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I can't, can't get it keep it together. Holy smokes. Supernatural is executive produced by Eric. Supernatural is this episode. Rich, you know, because you were on the show. <laughs> and now my favorite actor, no offense, Rich. Man, I tell you, there's some real gold that gets uh, cut out of these shows. Storybell Media. 